it's not going to be a job that you can sit outside drinking gin and tonic and the customers fall in the door. That happened 20 years ago. It doesn't happen anymore. You have to work very hard at this. <laughs> the idea of a restaurateur was, it's probably, um, it's a romantic idea. Yeah, the reality is that it's every waking hour it's working. A shop, for example, would, would be closed at five o'clock and then you go home, you know, you don't in the pub trade, it is a lifestyle. And sometimes I do think, you know, maybe it's easier being in Afghanistan or Iraq. Um, and I, I, I make no joke about that, that is, that is really true. Obviously you don't get shot at in a pub, although you do get, you know, sometimes beer, you know, thrown at you or <laughs> the like. What, what, one of the other questions you've got to ask yourself if you're going into the trade is what financial backing you've got. A lot of people sell the property, go into the pub trade, six months down the line they've lost everything and it's something they don't look into. They, they, they think, oh a couple of thousand is going to um, inject into this pub and it's going to be up and running. It isn't. It, it doesn't work like that. We injected 50,000 into this pub this year just to get it how it is now. and you've got to be prepared to do that okay you can borrow the money but at the end of the day you've got to pay it back and then that's when your bills start coming in and you've borrowed the money and you think i can't make the payments and then six months down the line you've closed anybody coming into it must sit down with all the family make sure that if you have got young children you do realize that school runs are when the pubs open um, illnesses with children it would be a totally different concept if you you had a family uh, and you must give that 100% consideration before you go anywhere. You've got to have a very, very strong foundation for this type of work, a very strong foundation. I've said things to Steve in temper, Steve said things to me in temper, and because I know him so well, because we've been together a good few years now, you know, it's water off of a duck's back, but I'd say in a new relationship, you know, tempers do get frayed. If you had to pick a person as a sort of profile to be a landlord, I don't think you could. I think that you have to be gregarious, you have to be humorous, you have to have an understanding of life. You know, sometimes you like Kofi Annan or, um, you know, Mother Teresa or the village priest because you hear only what they want to tell you, but alcohol does loosen the tongue. I mean, you've got to be, you've got to see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. You've got to be able to be turn it on, you're on a stage, you are on a stage, and you've got to be able to smile. People who shouldn't be, be publicans, I think, it's the ones who are coming for the wrong reasons, if you think it's literally going to be an easy way to get a house. People who, to be honest, can't stand behind the bar and not have a drink. There's times and places for everything. You should never get drunk in your own pub. I would strongly recommend um, that you try and get some experience um, work in bars or Marston's actually do insight weekends which are really really good um, hands-on experience to actually live on site is probably you know the best sort of preparation you would get i.e. on a morning your cleaner might phone in sick you know you've got to reschedule your whole morning because you're going to have to clean that pub because whatever happens it's got to open at 12 o'clock so I, I would strongly recommend getting booked in on one of those just to make sure you're making the right decision and just really give you the best sort of idea um, of what it'll actually be like living and breathing um, a publican's lifestyle. It's a life you choose, uh, it's a bit like becoming a priest or a monk, you have to devote your life to it.